Hello and welcome to this video on a new feature available from Autosys 12.1 SP1. In this video, you'll learn about the new ServiceNow integration. You'll learn about the new section in notifications for help desk requests, changes that have occurred in monitoring so that you can see what tickets are being created, how to configure the ServiceNow template to pass the information you desire to your tickets, as well as updates to auto rep and ways to minimize the number of tickets being created. So with that, over to you, Mike. Hi, today we're gonna to talk about uh, a new feature that was introduced in Autosys 12.1, Service Pack 1. And this is an integration with ServiceNow. So on your screen here is the, the ServiceNow UI and I've got a list of incidents here, and I'm going to take a look at the top one here. So this is a, an incident that was generated due to a, a job failure, uh, a job called snow test, and I'm running it from my instance of P01. And as you can see, I've got a, a number of different kind of fields and information in here that are kind of automatically populated. So one is the uh, the caller, so who's who's the um, the opener of this uh, incident? I've got an assignment group. I've got some urgency assigned to it, a description, and I've got some files attached here. So I've got a job log, a spool log, and a standard error log. I've got another kind of comment in here. Um, again, it tells me some more information about where the incident came from. So the scheduler host name, the type of failure, where the job actually ran, um, the job identifier. So this is the, the, the job ID and the run number and uh, retry number, the exit code, and I can put a, an optional message in there as well. I can also see that the impact is set to a three. It's priority one in here as well. So, Let's go over to the job definition and kind of see how this was incident was actually created. So here's my uh, edit for the for the job, and it just runs a, a test command that writes something to standard error, uh, sleeps for five seconds, and then exits with a return code of four on there. And I've got some standard out and standard error assigned to this job as well. And one thing about here is if you look at the application attribute, that's set to, to autosys. So the real magic happens in the notifications. So underneath the help desk request, there's a set of new attributes that you can you can utilize. So one is this create request, which yes or no type of switch. There's a template, and we'll take a look at the template in a little bit, but that tells me what information I actually want to send to ServiceNow and what's the, the format of it. I can set which alarms I want to open up a ticket for. So in my case, I'm using all, but, excuse me, um, you can also select which ones you want. So you know, job night on ice hold, whatever. Um, select which ones you want. Again, the easiest way is just uh, to select all because it's going to be based on the events or the alarms that this job would actually create. So if I don't have alarm if terminate enabled, I'm not going to get a termination alarm, for example. All right, so some of the other fields, and these are kind of free form type fields that I can put in there. So again, we looked at the urgency, the impact, and the priority, and these are being set by the job definition here. Otherwise, it would take the defaults for your, your ServiceNow um, configuration. And this is the, the caller ID, and again, I set that to, to Autosys. And this is actually kind of uh, predefined within ServiceNow, the, the valid ones. Um, so you would use, again, whatever your, your ServiceNow team has, has configured. Okay. 
And if I look at the, the quick view for the same job, uh, again, I can see that it's in a, a failed state right now. And if I look at the job runs, there's a new column that was introduced here to actually show me the, the incident number. So this actually tells me the help desk number that was opened up for that, for that particular run or for that particular alarm. All right, now on the Autosys side, the back engine, uh, there's the, the template that we, we talked about. So the template is essentially just that. Um, what do I want my service now to actually include? And while I'm on here, you'll see that there's um, standard out equals no, standard error equals yes, spool equals yes, and job log equals yes. So these are the three logs that I opted to, to upload. I chose not to upload the, the standard out, but I can if I want to. And on this last line is how many log lines from the end up that I actually want to uh, send to ServiceNow as well. Don't want to send too much if it's, especially if it's a standard out that kind of grows over time. It could be, you know, megs, gigs in size probably a little bit too much information to be uploaded. Um, so you can just restrict it down to the uh, appropriate number. Again, the, the default is 2000. For the other information that's actually kind of filled in, this is kind of the, the body for the REST service that we, we send up. And this is based on the, the ServiceNow um, REST API. It's in their documentation, it's uh, publicly available. And these are the fields that I chose to, to put in there. So again, the urgency, this is kind of the, the format for that, that new uh, attribute. I can just tell it, you know, it's, it's basically an array. So I tell it the, the, the array member that I want to add for that particular field. Um, also, you'll notice that for the assignment group, I'm actually using part of the regular job definition. So if I have everything in my job definition, I don't have to add these help desk attributes. It's optional. And for many of the fields, it can be a combination of hard-coded text and variables. So again, the template can be reused for multiple uh, jobs or applications. You can have a, you know, a template per application if you want, if they have different requirements, but generally for, for service now incidents, there's kind of a, a corporate standard for what information needs to be there. So again, generally you can, you can probably get away with um, one or two, you know, templates to, to get what you need in there. So like everything else in, or pretty much everything else in, Autosys, use Jill to insert these things. So we're inserting a, a glob or a global object. Uh, the mode is text. This is the name of the file and location of the file that we just looked at. The blob type is help desk. And if you remember um, when we added the email, there was an email template um, that was added for that. So it kind of follows the same type of format. And one more thing that we've added is on the auto rep. Again, if you're using help desk, we'll actually give you the, the incident number in there as well. So again, a little bit more information on the auto rep. And in the event daemon log, you'll actually see the incident numbers in there as the incidents are actually created. So end to end, you know, you'll, you'll get the information on uh, the alarms, of course. And if you're integrating with, with ServiceNow, you'll get an incident number back there as well. And there was some configuration on uh, the back end as well. You know, what's the URL for ServiceNow? Um, how many tickets do you want to open up? Do you want to open up all the tickets? So in the case of like an end retry, do you want all the failures to generate separate tickets? Do you want to just get the last one or just the first one? There's some additional configurations that you can do to kind of prevent too many tickets from, from being opened as well. 
you can also uh, suppress you know too many tickets being opened up for the same job uh, and instead of opening up separate tickets it'll again kind of take a look at the previous one and say for the test best hour i don't want to open up new tickets i'll just update the old ticket with additional information there and thank you for for listening